So what's going on guys, this is DIY Dan and today I am going to be doing some high pressure oil lines on my 2001 F250 with a power stroke. Um, little history on the power stroke man, this is an awesome year. I do not recommend buying anything after a 2002 up until like 2011 goes as far as a Ford diesel. Uh, the 6.0 and the 6.4 I believe, both garbage engines. The 6.0 way too many issues with the high pressure oil system uh, there's updates up the yin yang for them things the egr uh, coolers go bad on them um, hydrolock the engine uh, the idms the injector driver modules have problems um, the 6.0 is just an absolute piece of crap and then the 6.4 haven't had as much experience with those but i do not recommend those either i've heard bad stories about those as well but definitely do not buy a 6.0. They're just garbage, unreliable. Anyways, um, so I do have an oil leak and it's one of my two high pressure lines. Um, and I'll show you where those are at. This is the kit I bought from TRD. So I think it was 110 bucks um, to replace that. So far it looks pretty, uh, pretty good. Um, I do this stuff pretty much day in and day out. This looks like a pretty solid kit. So, um, so far looking good with that. And then this crossover tube I bought from KCM Diesel Performance. Um, I like the idea of the hard steel line. They should have molded this to go around everything so we have no rubbing points, which is a big key factor that uh, I'm stoked about. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my intake off from my turbo down to my, to the air to airs and down into my engine. So we have the clamp here clamp there, clamp here, and then there's two clamps that are a 5 16 um, going down into the engine right here and on the other side. I'm unplugging my um, sensor here, uh, the heater wires, I'm going to disconnect, I've got a sensor down here unplugged, and then the boost port right here, I'm going to unplug as well and get this thing out of the way. So, Alright, so... Uh, this clamp can be a little bit of a pain. So the easiest way to knock it free is take a screwdriver and just give it a little tap with a hammer and it'll pop off of there, no problem. All right, so uh, hold everything loose and then I usually grab a couple cans of brake clean and just spray off all your, your hoses right there just to keep them from getting any debris in your engine as best you can before pulling this thing off. Aim it as best you can. All right, now this thing should come right up out of here. I'm gonna leave that hose hooked up and just leave it off to the side. All right, good. All right, so I need to apply some Loctite to these fittings so I don't want in my experience, Loctite works better in a nice dry surface, so I'm going to suck some of this oil out just using a, a medicine syringe. And hopefully, it won't take that long. Okay, stop. So that actually took a little longer than I thought it would, but you can see I've drained down that oil down where the threads are exposed now. So now I'm just gonna take a little bit of brake clean, spray it in there, and then uh, apply the Loctite and put that fitting on. So this is actually a purple Loctite made for hydraulic, which I decided to go ahead and use. Um, but I would figure a blue, um, even a red, because it is metal on metal, you should be fine. All right, guys, so got those both in. You can't really tell, but I put a little drop of Loctite on those fittings as well to seal onto this because I do not want this backing off on me. So I'm going to get that put on. All right, guys, so that thing's in. You can see it as best you can. Um, went pretty smooth. I will say be careful when you're starting the pipe. Um, I started it in the one side, and you kind of have to leverage it up to get it seated in this side. 
and then start one side make sure it goes on finger tight do not do it with a wrench absolutely not you will strip it out and uh, so I got the one side started for sure I went over to the other side and I kind of had to leverage you know uh, I kind of had to leverage up on the line a little bit to get that where it would thread on by hand to start with and then just ran it on down um, so just be careful you don't strip it but it is going to be tucked out of the way of everything no rubbing which is awesome all right guys well um, I got my hoses all off I've got my two fittings it's kind of hard to see all right those were a pain in the butt quarter turn at a time so you've really got to be patient with these and do not run them in with a wrench. Get them started by hand. They should go finger tight. Um, when you pull, if you got the original hoses on, and this sheet actually recommended it also, so I'll go ahead and show it to you. Uh, underneath the fittings, there is check valves. And uh, in the instructions, uh, it says to pull them out. So I went ahead and did um, this basically the old original hose. And then this hose actually did not have a check valve in it. Uh, granted, I bought this truck with 100 and some odd thousand miles on it already, so somebody had already done this hose and must have already pulled the check valve out of that one because there was not one in there. Uh, so this is what I pulled off. And uh, like I said, you've got to be patient with this though because uh, cross-threading one of these fittings is about the worst thing you can do. You could really cause yourself some major headaches. So. Uh, there's a 90 in that one That one's tucked away under there somewhere. You can't really see it But and then my two pump fittings and now uh, I got some 90s in the hoses to put on All right guys, so as you can see um, It's dark outside So this took longer than expected But we are done um, You got to have a lot of patience. I've been doing this kind of work for um, 20 years now and uh, there was a few cuss words and some uh, yelling and screaming and taking a five minute break um, to regain my composure before trying again uh, so make sure you got an afternoon plan for this man this was uh, not friendly so I was a little worried about how bulky these lines were and uh, how they were gonna fit in here but this one comes around loops around um, I don't like it rubbing that wiring harness. Um, you need to keep as much of that away So I haven't figured out what I'm gonna do about that yet uh, Because that's what will cause a line failure and then uh, once I get the intake all hooked back up We'll see how this one looks now uh, This fitting on the head was supposed to have a 45 on it and That really made this bend a lot more aggressive and a lot more tension on it So it worked without that 45 um, so uh, and that's just an extra, you know, degree that doesn't need to be in there, extra fittings that can leak. Um, so the picture here, that's the, the 45 they say to put on there, and I just went straight onto it. And it uh, worked out pretty well. So uh, let me finish putting the rest of this thing back together, and uh, we'll see how she runs. Okay, guys, so um, last little thing here. Um, again, try and route everything back as, so you can keep the least amount of rubbing as possible. I'm hooking up the intake heater now. I've got the ground wire on. And then there's this insulator and that keeps that from a direct short to your positive. So make sure you get that on correctly. And then your positive goes on after that. Alright. So we're about wrapping it up here. And overall, this thing took about three hours of, probably three and a half hours of my life. And I've been doing this kind of a thing for 20 years now. So uh, plan an afternoon and take your time. We'll see how she goes. Go! I didn't say stop. Stop! Okay, hold on a second. Let's let it cool down. Ready? Yep.
All right, hold on. Ready? Go. All right, guys, so uh, we're all done. Uh, she's still taking a little long to crank, but there probably just is some air still in the system. And I'm going to show you what every, you know, most of the tools I use so you get an idea. Now the crossover tube, no big deal. Um, I think anybody is quite capable of doing that. That basically took uh, a 5 ace stubby wrench and a 5 ace regular wrench. is pretty much all I used, I think, for the most part to do that crossover tube. And then obviously some miscellaneous stuff, but um, no big deal. Those stupid high pressure oil lines, those suckers, that was not friendly at all. So, um, I mean, these wrenches, which are special angled, um, you know, came in really handy. You've got to have stubby wrenches for sure. Um, what else did I use? You know, a hook like this works great for getting the intake boots back on. Kind of stick it in there and roll it around. And uh, really helps you get those bottom intake boots on. Um, you know, I use some wobbly extensions. Uh, magnet to pull the springs and the check balls out. Um, yeah, so quite a bit entailed in these high pressure oil lines. Uh, the crossover tube is couple hours max um, so keep that in mind and you got to be patient and like I said finger start everything I remember when I was sucking out that oil out of the uh, tubes that's how much oil I got out of them things before they'd get below where I could dry them up enough where I felt good about the Loctite I ain't even started going into that one a little bit but um, still only took me like five minutes to do so I think it was well worth doing um, so anyways um, hope you guys uh, got something out of this video man and uh, well I will do an update video probably in about a month we'll see how that crossover tube uh, does whether I notice any quieter any smoother operation any mileage gain whatsoever uh, I'll do an update video and we'll let you know how it goes so uh, have a good one guys see you next time later